ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ అండ్ పర్పర్ట్ బై శ్రీల ప్రభుపాల్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ద ఫాదర్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ప్రజాపతిస్ బ్రహ్మ ద సీయింగ్ ఆల్ ఇస్ ప్రజాపతి సన్ స్పీకింగ్ ఇన్ దట్ వే వికేమ్ వెరీ మచ్ అషేమ్డ్ అండ్ అట్ వన్స్ గేవ్ అప్ ద బాడీ హీ హ్యాడ్ అక్సెప్టెడ్ లేటర్ దట్ బాడీ అపియర్డ్ ఇన్ ఆల్ డైరెక్షన్స్ హ్యాస్ ద డేంజరస్ ఫాక్ ఇన్ డార్క్నెస్ పర్పట్ the best way to compensate for one sinful act is to give up one's body at once and brahma the leader of the living entities showed this by his personal example brahma had a fabulous duration of life but he was obligated to give up the give up his body due to his grievous sin even though he had merely contemplated in his mind without having actually done it this is a lesson for all living entities showing how sinful an act it is to indulge in unrestricted unrestricted sex life even to think of abominable sex life is sinful and to compensate for such sinful acts one has to give up his body in other words one duration of life blessings opulence etc are decreased by sinful acts and the most dangerous type of sinful act is unrestricted sex ignorance is the cause of sinful life or sinful life is the cause of gross ignorance the feature of ignorance is darkness or fo- or fog darkness or fog still covers the whole universe and the sun is the only counteracting principle one who takes shelter of the lord the personal perpetual light has no fear of being annihilated in the darkness of fog or ignorance the sense the bhakti vedanta purport so we are continuing to discuss from the past time where brahma is creating different prajapatis and after he created different prajapatis he created a daughter named walk so he became sexually attracted towards her just within his mind then when his sons the previously created prajapatis when they saw that his father the great mahajana whom everyone take as a spiritual model so they started praying to him that you know this kind of act doesn't befitting that doesn't befit you so when uh, then after praying to the father the sons of brahma ji in the previous sons we have heard that you know they started praying to the supreme personality of god it because they knew that supreme personality of god it is the only one who gives protection to all religion so if the lord wishes he can actually stop this act so in today's verse then brahma heard all his prayers his sons speaking like this so he became very ashamed and at once he gave up his body which he had accepted so in the purport proper mentions about effect of sinful life and also what is the solution of that sinful act so when we read these kind of past times of great devotees or suppose in the purport what is mentioned today that what is the counter act of that sinful act is to give up the body so we have to understand with a very open mind we should not just take it the instructions as it is we have to be very very careful cautious and we have to properly understand from the acharya's point of view in the yesterday class madhu pandit pro class prabhu was mentioning that an acharya's interpretation is required to understand the proper purports of the vedas why acharya is required why say like propad purport propad in many any bhagavad gita you take so generally what they do they take the verse word sometimes word to word meaning if not that's also not there translation so that's how you know many <coughs> editions of bhagavad gita are very precise whereas for every verse propad gives such wonderful purports how to apply that instruction or the or the philosophical point in our practical life that's why <coughs> acharya's interpretation is very much required so especially today's verse when we read so devotees we has to be completely they have to read understand from the full com- from the comprehensive point of view not just take this one verse one purport and uh, start applying in their life why i'm mentioning is that <coughs> it's a very strong purport that what is the effect of unrestricted sex life and uh, once after being engaged in this way what a person is supposed to do 
So even though Prabhupada is writing here, but if you comp comprehensively understand the Prabhupada teachings, then we will understand that you know what was the mood with which his Prabhupada is writing here. That's why we have to always go to the purpose behind the activity or behind even the purpose. So we have to go to that purpose, not just apply the instructions as it is. So one such instance <coughs> happens during a Prabhupada's time. We all know how Vishnu Janaswami, who was a stalwart leader at that time, so he was one of the Sankirtan leaders in Radha Damodar Sankirtan party. Radha Damodar Sankirtan party was doing fabulous preaching work. So they had hundreds of brahmacharis. They had, uh, you know, <coughs> I think 20, 30 buses. They used to go to wherever they would completely flood the city with Prabhupada books, preaching, Sankirtan. So the Radha Damodar Sankirtan party's glory, their service was at the peak. So during Mayapur, uh, Gaur Purnima festival, so it was a system Prabhupada that created that, you know, all the devotees should come to Mayapur. At least once in a year, they should all congregate together. So GBC meeting, meetings used to happen. A lot of Gaur Purnima before and after festivals used to happen for the engagement of the devotees, Sankirtan, classes, different kinds of activities. So many devotees had come. So in conversations is conversation is there where it was on the rooftop of, uh, you know, building where Prabhupada was staying. So it's a morning walk conversation. So many devotees were there, Panchadravida Swami, Tamal Krishna Goswami, Kirtananda Swami, you know, Chutananda Swami, many, uh, you know, devotees like that. So they were asking about, you know, different uh, activities. So pre before coming to Mayapur Prabhupada, they had gone to Nellore, South India in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So Nellore and uh, uh, Tirupati both. So when Prabhupada had visited there, so Prabhupada was received with a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, respect, and paraphernalia, they had, they had used an umbrella, like how we use an umbrella for the Palaki, for Popa. So that kind of, generally South India, they use that kind of a very beautiful umbrellas. So devotees asked that Popa, can we use that kind of an umbrella for you? Because it was looking so gorgeous. Popa says, yes. So this is the way Acharya Upasana, Acharya Upasana. So that's the, that's in the Bhagavad Gita. So this is not, it is not for a self uh, aggressiveness. It's not to show off that, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, big Swami, no, not like that. But for a spiritual uh, progress of a disciple, this this worship of the spiritual master in this way <coughs> is very important. So then further, Panchadravida Swami asked another question. How does that work? That if somebody has an association of pure devotee for only a lava or one eleventh of a second, he attains all perfection? Prabhupada, if he is so sincere, just like dried wood immediately ignites. And if it is moist, it does not. If the quality of the wood, one takes 300 years, one in three minutes. That means if the wood is dry, that the Prabhupada is comparing wood and fire, wood and matchstick both. Both has to be dry, then only there can be fire. Similarly, so devotee, the disciple and the guru, both have to be pure, pure enough so that the purification process is very fast. So he immediately becomes ignited and he immediately becomes spiritual. So Tamal Krishna, what is the drying process? That means what is the purification process? Propad. Drying process is for many, many years. One has tried to become Krishna conscious for very many lives. Bahunam Janmana Bhante. When he actually becomes man of knowledge, he surrenders on to God. Otherwise, he is lost. His drying process may take three minutes or three million years. So, another devotee. But that knowledge that Krishna is everything comes by Krishna's mercy, Srila Prabhupada. Krishna's mercy is already there. But if you are not able to take it, then further, you know, discussions goes on like this. However, disciple has to be very sincere. He has to be very cautious not to commit sinful activities because the drying process has started. But in the process of drying up the wood, if you again pour the water, it will become wet again. So the process of purification gets delayed. So this is where Vishnu Jan Swami was also there among those devotees. He was just behind Prabhupada. So then he asked a question, Sheila Prabhupada, how did Chota Haridas achieve perfection by killing himself after apparently pouring water on his devotional creeper by talking to a woman? So, this is uh, this is during Mayapur, Mayapur, uh, uh, you know, Gauru Purnima festival. So, before coming here, so there was a Ratyatra. So, in that Ratyatra festival, Vishnu Jan, one devotee is actually, you know, recalling what and all the sequence of events happened. 
So Vishnu Jumana Swami, pre- before become, you know, he joined the movement, he was a grihastha, he had two children. When his wife was not favorable for Krishna consciousness, so then he, you know, he joins, then he has, he has taken sannyasa, oh, he has taken sannyasa ashrama. Then during Ratyatra festival, she happens to be there in, to come to Ratyatra festival and Vishnu Jana apparently talks to her. So conversation, he was trying to preach to her that, you know, how Krishna consciousness is so... Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's so important. You should take up Krishna conscious like that. So then, after coming to Mayapur, he's asking Prabhupada because some thought process is going on in, in the devotee's mind. So then, Prabhupada, his question was that how did Chota Haridas achieve perfection by killing himself? Because generally, in the Shastra, there's not something which is recommended, even though Chaitanya Charitamrita explains about that. So then, Prabhupada actually explains how that past time of Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and punishing Chota Haridas Thakur after his apparent fall down, how that should be taken? Prabhupada. His instance was that even an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can fall down. And if one falls down, his punishment, punishment is that suicide. There is no other punishment. He must commit suicide. That is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. Otherwise, he is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's personal servant. He cannot fall down. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed this instance that even one is my personal servant, he can fall down. And if anyone, by any cause, he falls down, his punishment must be commit suicide. That is his instruction. That is the reason I mentioned that after reading this purport, we, have, we just need not have to go to one particular statement and uh, take that actually. We have to completely con- comprehensively see the complete uh, you know, conversation, complete understanding. Otherwise, it's a half-cooked uh, you know, knowledge kind of a thing which will be a which is not good for our devotional service. So what happens? Prabhupada replied to this. Prabhupada said, suicide is the only solution. So it's a morning walk. So everyone is walking. Prabhupada moved forward. Devotees also moved forward. Unfortunately, Vishnu Janaswami stood there. Because unfortunately, he did not hear the further conversation. He just stood there. So without hearing complete conclusion, what Prabhupada is saying. So then further what Prabhupada is saying. Tamal Krishna very steep. Prabhupada, oh yes, you have fallen down, you must commit suicide. So you, can, you must commit suicide. No more my association. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's punishment to Arida Stakar. Pushta Krishna. Is that the same as in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, for one who is honored, dishonor is worse than death. This is the Bhagavad Gita instruction. Prabhupada, yes. There is another thing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally taught this. To be victimized by Maya is, there is possibility. Just like Jay Vijaya, they were gate creepers in the Vaikuntha. They also fell down. Hiranyakashipu. So this fall down, there is possibility in any moment because we are very small. We can be captivated by Maya at any moment. Therefore, we shall be very, very careful. And if you fall down, then punishment is, you make suicide, that's all. Then next life we shall see. Then Satsurup Maharaj. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada, in the nectar of devotion, it says, devotional service is so pure that there is no prayashita necessary. Just again engage in your devotional service. Prabhupada. Yes, that's not prayashita. This is exemplary punishment. He was not liable to be punished, but they played. This is the, this should be done. This means Prabhupada is referring to Chota Arida's past time. He was not liable to be punished, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is setting an example. How strict one should be with respect to following the regulatory principles. So he did not kill himself immediately, waited for a year. For a year. So uh, further it goes on like that. He was waiting for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to accept him again. But when he saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not lenient, so then he said there is no other option. Tamal Krishna Maharaj. But Prabhupada, if you were so strict as if you were like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada, no, 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 no. I am not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why are you comparing to me? I am an ordinary man. So in his con, if someone falls down, it means that he should commit suicide. Please listen very carefully because these instructions have, were very careful what Prabhupada is actually referring to. So in Iskon, if someone falls on, that means it should commit suicide. Prabhupada, no. We would not have much of a movement then. Prabhupada himself is further clarifying. We are too much attached to our bodily bodies anyway. Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, no. If he falls down, that is automatically suicide. That's, that's known as spiritual suicide. Because we were given the Bhakti Lata Bij by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. So then after obtaining Bhakti Lata Bija, that creeper, we are not able to maintain that. So Janiya, Suniya, Vishakhainu, how Narottam Das Thakur says. By knowingly we are drinking poison, by engaging in the sense gratification. So what Prabhupada is referring to here is that even 
committing that itself is like a you know suicide what happens when you, when, a, when a person commits a sinful activity like here in the purport profad mentions okay even to think of abominable sex life is sinful and to compensate for such sinful acts one has to give up his body in other words next important statement in other words one's duration of life blessings opulence etc are decreased by sinful acts and this is where devotee you know he will kshine punya martya lokam vishanti bhagavad gita in the bhagavad gita krishna says kshine punya when our punya when our pious act activities pious results get depleted kshine means depleted when it when it decreases then what happens martya lokam vishanti so we come back to this material world from the even heavenly planets are even from is basically referring to heavenly planets those who go to the heavenly planets so what by committing sinful activities by not being serious in krishna consciousness so we are actually wasting our life that's what propad is meaning here so if you the, no if he falls down that's automatically suicide if he falls down that means he's, you know he has got chance but if he falls down then he has spoiled his you know great opportunity which he has got propad so if someone gets a chance of becoming eligible for going back home back to godhead and if he commits mistake it and it is stopped is it not suicide that means spiritual suicide guru krupa you have given the example shila propa of taking your plane off the ground and then bringing it back to the land again so yes then propa says you once give the example at another devotee that you have take you have take a destination and you have to return around and come back and start all over again take off again there are so many instances like this drudavrata bhajante mam drudavrata so we should be very strong minded and continue our devotional service very strongly i think what is the what is the result propad further explains that so one one what you want what one is supposed to do bhajante mam drudavrata ha so it has to be very determined even if there is a fall down occasional fall down what whatever it may be whatever the degree of fall down it may be but one has to come back again to the devotional path that is the natural atonement natural atonement which is which bhagavatam itself is mentioning so i cannot be so propad was very clear with this what devotee is supposed to do but unfortunately what happens so vishnu janana swami did not hear the complete conversation what propad is meaning so then from that day devotees were not able to find him so propad you know, message comes to propad propad you know has different devotees gbc members like tamal krishna goswami who was there along with him in radha damodar sankirtan party so then someone says we saw him in mathura railway station so apparently he you know the news later comes to propad comes to know that you know he had gone to allahabad and he had committed suicide propad said it's a, it's a blunder he has done he was a wonderful devotee such a good kirtaniya he was he was, there was no requirement for him to go through this kind of a, a, you know <clears throat> prayashita process because hari naam the chanting of the holy name is a natural at- atonement so one need not how to go through this process of you know so called uh, you know this thing so even though chaitanya mahaprabhu is setting an example like propad here is mentioning very clearly you know three places propad mentions that you know, one should one should give up his body one should give up his body so but his this past time basically why this concept is coming is because brahma gave up his body so what brahma gave up his body what is that mean like last class, previous class we may we heard that brahma is having which body which type of body subtle body brahma is not having gross body so giving up of body the means that is not like we we die and our body is cremated or it is buried it is burnt brahma's giving up body is not like that because he's a he's a spiritually is a you know very very enlightened soul brahma is not ordinary soul like us so that brahm what is the brahma giving up his body that's again explained in shrimad bhagavatam so shrimad bhagavatam is warning us that since how dangerous sense gratification is and then what will happen if one someone is engaged in the sense gratification and shrimad bhagavatam is also giving solution to sense gratification Bra- bhagavatam generally doesn't discuss only problem bhagavatam also gives problem as well as solution both why problem and solution both are given because bhagavatam purpose is meant for that to enliven the living entities devotees like us so solution is also given so this chapter you know the creation of kumaras and others so when the, in the starting of this chapter in the very second verse of this chapter 
previous chapter was creation of previous chapter name was calculation of time from atom so very complicated very scientific uh, explanation of the uh, you know creation of the lord so then this chapter onwards brahma has created secondary creation visarga he has started uh, sarga has been done by the lord so he is doing visarga so in the second verse itself brahma first created the nascent engagements like self deception false of death like five kinds of nascents he created then after that when he saw that i think someone can switch on this light so then after that when brahma saw that you know nescence because this creating ignorance is not a very pleasing thing punishing someone is not very pleasing actually punishing someone is a very very painful process actually someone may think you know how come authorities can take such a harsh decisions it's a very very painful thing but what happens to set an example or to cre- to to set an example so that that punishment may be given to a devotee but it's not a good thing so here brahma also felt not so good you know uh, uh, ignorance means what is a punishment to living entity so then again brahma he purified his consciousness so this concept this uh, principle is further elaborated in the 20th chapter we are discussing from the third canto 12th chapter now so 20th chapter this is again further elaborated so brahma created five kinds of nescence activity and then uh, i'll read on some of the important uh, purports so out of disgust brahma threw off the body of ignorance and taking this opportunity yakshas and rakshasas sprang for possession of the body which continued to exist in the form of night so brahma gave up that body so this is not the first time like after he contemplated on sexual indulgence with his daughter that, and he gave up his body that is not the first time previous already once one one time before brahma has already left his body so brahma threw off his body then what happened so then when he threw off his body so yakshas and all uh, as it mentioned yakshas and rakshasas they started going behind his body so then brahma what did you do so then further when he was peaceful when he was in satva guna so he created demigods so that is no, that what that demigods took that body that body became the day time just like how ignorance become night time so this body which when demigods were created that particular body when brahma's consciousness was good that became a day time so that's mentioned here brahma the head of the demigods full of anxiety asked them do not eat in this when rakshas actually started running after uh, him then further it is mentioned okay so then after creating the uh, demigods devo devan jagannatha srujati smrati lopuna tayenam lopupatyaya maitunaye papidyate so lord brahma then gave birth to the demons after creating demon first yakshas and rakshasas were created then demigods were created then now brahma is creating demons another type of living entities so brahma gave birth to demons from the buttocks and they were very fond of sex because they were too lustful they approached him for copulation so parapat propad mentions sex life is the background of material existence this is the, the sex life is the this is the one shackle which binds living entity to this to this world other all other regulative principles all other sinful activities it's not so difficult to give up compared to the sex life so here it's also appealed that demons were very fond of sex life sense gratification is having demoniac tendencies demoniac mentality then next verse when brahma Uh, so that you know we, when he created demons and they are running after him for the sex so brahma started uh, you know laughing at them stupidity what did i do so then what to do so then next he approached the personality of godhead who bestows all boons and who dispels agony of his devotees so they when they started running after him for the sex so brahma has to protect himself so then he goes to the supreme personality of godhead please help me what should i do now so lord brahma approaching the lord addressed him my lord please protect me from these sinful demons who are created by me under your order they are infuriated by an appetite for sex and have come to attack me so brahma is said then further you are the only protection only you can protect me otherwise i will not be able to you know save myself so then the supreme lord is replying to brahma's request so uh, the lord who can distinctly see the minds of others perceived brahma's distress and said to him cast off this impure body of yours thus commanded by the lord brahma cast off his body so 
very important verse lord uh, supreme lord is saying to brahma so that you know from this body from your buttock you created all the demons so because of this body all these things has happened you cast off this body you give up this body then by lord's order brahma gave up his body so purport is very important what is the meaning of brahma giving up his body so that is mentioned in this purport actually it's a long purport i'll read only the relevant portion from this purport the lord however asked brahma to give up his present body because it had created the demonic principle according to shridhar swami brahma's constant dropping of his body does not refer to his actually giving up his body rather he suggests that brahma gave up a particular mentality so because brahma is not having gross body brahma ji is having subtle body so in the subtle body what is the meaning of sexual indulgence it's just a thought grossly indulging gross body is required so brahma is it's everything is in his mind is just thinking to have sex life so that is the that is the sinful activity which brahma has done so when lord said that in the today's context you know it is said that you know brahma gave up his body or when the demons attacked brahma so lord is saying that you know give up this body so what it is what lord is referring to that shridhar swami is confirming which propad is referring in this purport is that you know give up that sinful mentality not the gross body brahma's constant dropping of his body does not refer to his actually giving up his body rather he suggests that brahma gave up a particular mentality mind is the subtle body of the living entity we may sometimes be absorbed in some thought which is sinful but if we give up the sinful thought it may be said that we give up the body so giving up the body in the case of brahma is what just give up that sinful thought so what is the instruction for a devotee so what what is the meaning like propad here is mentioning three times in this purport is mentioning one should give up his body give up his body give up that mentality of sense gratification give up the mentality of sexual indulgence not the gross body because even after you give up this gross body does the desire go away what if if someone okay if consider you know if someone immaturely take this instructions commit suicide does he free from the uh, sense gratification desires no it will be even more painful even it will be even more uh, you know sinful it is because desires will not go because desires are carried or present desires in this body are carried to the next body next body through mind intelligence and ego ego mind and intelligence carries our present desires present you know the mentality to the next body so now next body is not there so desires are still remaining you want to eat but you cannot eat why you don't have gross body you don't have mouth to eat you want to touch you want to smell but you cannot smell so that is that will be even more painful that's why it is said suicide is a very sinful activity it is never recommended so when it is said spiritual suicide spiritual suicide means being a devotee being a practitioner of devotional service not following the principles properly that is known as spiritual suicide not to commit physical suicide as such so that's what devotees has to understand from the instructions otherwise immaturely we end up in doing something wrong which will be even more dangerous so then further in this purport proper mentions mind is a subtle body of the living entity we may sometimes be absorbed in some thought which is sinful but if we give up that sinful thought it may be said that we give up that body brahma's mind was not in correct order when he created the demons like in this context it was demons those who started running behind him so it must have been full of passion because the entire creation was passionate therefore such passionate sons were born so it it follows that any father and mother should be very careful while begetting children so because the child consciousness is is depending on the consciousness of the father when they were uniting that's why garbhadana sanskara is very much required so propad mentions in this purport so these kind of instances one statement of propad we cannot just take and apply in our life like sometimes propad you know propad would have written a letter to one uh, grihastha devotee was just blessed with a baby boy that you know de- 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 uh, you know taking care of the child is more important than taking care of the deities it does not mean that propad is actually referring propad never made any such you know rule in the organization that you know all the grihasthas first they should take care of the child no it was just in one occasion for maybe that devotee may be going through some uh, you know some difficulties some challenges to encourage him from that 
to give him some solace propad is writing that letter so that context that's why it is mentioned that you know like yeah, yesterday class i'm repeating again that acharya's interpretation is very much required so you cannot just take the principles or past times as it is and start applying in our life so then here it is mentioned that later the body which brahma gave up what body the subtle body the just the thinking the lusty thinking what he gave up so that lusty thinking became fog in darkness in all directions so fog in darkness so like you know in the winters especially in our place like in jaipur in our country we see fog only in in the peak winters actually so when the fog is there we cannot see sunlight and it's not a very good thing actually that's why it is known as hellish conditions so once propad uh, was uh, propad lands up in uh, london airport then reporters they come they ask propad swami ji where is hell so what was what did propad answer hell is in london so next day that was a big news hari krishna swami is saying london is hell so why propa said london is hell because london no sunlight always it is uh, you know foggy uh, drizzling every second third day actually it rains there of, of course because of the rain the country is beautiful there is no dirt or uh, everywhere it is green but also there is no sunlight it is always foggy so you cannot go out properly so propa says that you know this this kind of conditions are not meant for living entities to live actually so because living entities means they want light 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 you know the natural sunlight brings energy so that's why then brahma ji's body is became dangerous fog in darkness so then how to remove that darkness so now okay we we heard all these things how we should take it actually so now what is the solution which bhagavatam refers now sinful activity is there what will happen if someone is engaged in a sinful activity what happens he will develop demoniac mentality so here propad in the purport propad mentions ignorance is the cause of sinful life or sinful life is the cause of gross ignorance it's vice versa ignorance is the cause of sinful life or sinful life is the cause of ignorance so how we why do we commit sinful activity because we know that we should not commit we know it's wrong we should not do it but still why we do that because of our ignorance because we are influ- because of the influence of mode of uh, ignorance tamo guna then what happens after we commit sinful activity we will further go down to the more into tamo guna anda tamishra more in, more deep into that ignorance so then how should we come out of this what is the solution then so bhagavatam gives the solution also so bhagavatam not only gives problems it gives solution so what is the solution in one of the Uh, shrimad bhagavatam text sukadev goswami is explained to parikshit maharaj that what is the solace for a devotee to come out of this sense gratification desire so he gives an example just like here today's verse it is mentioned about uh, niharam niharam means fog so he, in this verse also same thing is mentioned kechit kevalaya bhaktya vasudeva parayana agam dhunvanti kashneya niharam miha baskara so agam dhunvanti agam means sinful pap agam means papa sinful activity all kinds of sinful reaction so how a devotee can come out of all kinds of sinful activity kechit kevalaya bhaktiya kevalaya bhaktiya just by executing unalloyed devotional service kevalaya bhaktiya so translation only a rare person who has adopted complete unalloyed devotional service to krishna can uproot the weeds of sinful actions with no possibility that they will revive who can do this simply by discharging devotional sir he can do it simply by discharging devotional service just as the sun can immediately dissipate fog by its rays niharam iha baskara baskara refers to sun so as in the even winter's time morning it is thick fog is there but sometimes in the day time like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock when sun becomes strong when the sun shine or his rays become strong so the rays pierce through that fog through the darkness and they come so when the sunlight comes most of us want to go and sit on the park in the sunshine because that's very pleasurable with that's very pleasing so similarly if someone like brahma's case it's mentioned that you know his body the sinful mentality became a thick fog so then how to remove that fog nihara miha baskara so what is that baskara refers to here it's here it is devotional service kechit kevalaya bhaktiya so by following by 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 being in the by following the devotional service a devotee can remove that 
thick dense fog of darkness in his life so by discharging devotional service so there in the purport proper mentions in the previous verse shukadev goswami gave the example that dried leaves of creepers beneath a bamboo tree may be completely burnt to ashes by a fire previous verse translation was this that uh, you know so bamboo tree so generally bamboo sheds lot of uh, you know dried leaves and leaves are thick generally they don't get uh, you know they don't they don't get uh, they generally what happens leaf means by air they are carried away or through the mud you know they get decomposed so these are two things happens but bamboo because they are thick neither they are carried by air nor they are decomposed so easily so they all you know uh they all uh, catch up with in one place so then what happens that's that's the reason for forest fire the bamboo leaves are the reason for forest fire so propad here is quoting that that the dry leaves of a creeper beneath a bamboo tree may be completely burnt to ashes by a fire although the creepers may sprout again because the root is still in the ground still the bamboo's ground uh, the root is still in the ground entire bamboo tree is burnt to ashes because of those because of the leaves so but again when the rain comes after the rainy season the creeper again sprouts up similarly apparently it may look like a devotee one who is engaged in sinful activity one who is engaged in uh, sense gratification so yes what will happen to bhakti lata so bhakti lata may look like it's almost dried up it may look like almost it dried up no tinja bhakti the devotee also may become completely hopeless what should i do now i am seeing no hopes i am completely uh, sucked by the sense gratification desires so what is the hope so then he should he should just like how bamboo waits for next rainy season to sprout up so he should be what he should do is that he become more sincere and with that sincerity he should be engaged in devotional service ke chit ke walaya bhaktiya so then what happens again the devotional bhakti lata actually cannot be dried devotional service is something which is can which cannot be which cannot be you know uh, you know uh, you know burnt to ashes so it, but what can happen is that because of sinful activity the progress may become slow the sinful activity may become you know strong impediments for the for the advancement for the development of the creeper but it cannot burn it to ashes so again he has to engage in the devotional service what is that bhajante mam druda vrataha so be engaged in the, uh, in the chanting process with more conviction more determination then what happens again you will revive that energy so then bhakti lacha will again grow so it it's like no sinful acts no sinful activity has the power to completely diminish the creeper of devotional service however powerful sinful it may be however powerful the abominable activity may be but devotional creeper cannot be burnt that is the power of devotional service that's why krishna uh, when arjuna asks a question to krishna that what will happen to a unsuccessful yogi okay you have described about successful yogis they'll reach my destination what will happen to that unsuccessful yogi so then what krishna answers so he will be he will take birth in a pious family a aristocratic family or a devotee family so why pious family or aristocratic family because in that life he need not have to struggle for food shelter cloth basic necessities of life he need not have to struggle for all those things so that then already is been given the facility that he can continue his devotional service so devotional service that is the greatness of devotional service it cannot be burnt to ashes so here brahma so these kind of past times whether brahma's past time or apparently where in another part of shrimad bhagavatam in the 8th canto where lord shiva who is running behind mohini murti so these kind of examples these kind of actually past time they are not they are just past time not just incidents they are past times so these past times have to be understood with spiritual understanding <laughs> with spiritual concept not from our material this thing oh shiva also was a you know ran behind a you know beautiful woman so what is wrong in in a devotee committing some sinful activity no it's not like that so shiva when he ran behind bhagavatam says that you know he go he went and embraced mohini murti then when he embraced he discharged semen so shiva is such a great powerful personality that semen it became gold and silver mine so we cannot take this example so ordinary uh, you know hey a fellow 
loose character person getting engaged in sense sense gratification it's not like that so these pastimes are meant for what to teach devotees so in that uh, eighth canto one one of the verse where then after that he start running behind mohini murti mohini takes him to a place where all the great saintly uh, you know devotees were performing meditation so why lord vishnu in the form of mohini took uh, shiva to that place because he wanted to teach all those devotees those who are engaged in meditation that even a great personality like lord shiva can also fall down he also can become become mesmerized by the illusory energy so you be careful so behind all these things there is a purpose so what is that purpose a lesson for a devotee he has to be very very careful cautious in every step spiritual path is like a walking on a razor's edge the moments of inattention there will be cut there will be blood so this he, he, these verses this past times are meant to meant to caution us make us more serious not to make us afraid devotion then what is the there is no hope at all even the lord is lord illusory energy so powerful then how can i protect my devotional service we need not we have to be fearful we have to be cautious yes all these things are required but it's it's not that you know we do there is no hope at all no there is a big hope but all these past times are meant to time and again to caution a devotee otherwise you know living entities conditioned souls we forget under the uh, under the uh, you know spell of maya we forget and we start enjoying anyway nothing is happening when everything is going well actually we don't remember lord much when something goes wrong we run to the altar in front of the deity start praying to them lord please save me please save me either to the altar or to the tc office or uh, you know tp office <laughs> prabhu please save me trahi maam trahi maam so this is all to teach us how every moment we have to be very cautious and careful so in with this understanding we should take these past times not in a fearful not in a very oh there is no hope in my devotional life so hope is there devotional service is much more potent than this sinful activity krishna is much more potent so if you are sincere krishna will protect krishna will give protection i stop here grantara shrimad bhagavatam ki जगद्गुरुशीला प्रोपाद मिताय गोत्रे मनंदी